This video is part one of a planned series of videos describing the production of some of these Disney Bowl pattern projects such as these bowls, some eggs, and even some bells. The process begins by cutting a variety of thin strips of a variety of different woods of contrasting colors on the Accu slice system and then gluing these together to produce these laminate boards. From these boards, we cut out round disc, such as this, and these discs get sliced again to produce these thin discs, and you glue these back together, rotating them to produce the Dizzy Bowl pattern in these projects. This is part one of the video series, and we'll describe the production of these laminate boards. I need to prepare my stock that I'm going to use to cut my thin strips on the Acu slice for this project. And this is a piece of cherry, one and three quarter inches square, that I cut from a larger piece of cherry. And I ran through my surface uh, sander to get it perfectly, uh, get the sides perfectly parallel to one another. Uh, but what I need to do next is get this surface that goes against the sacrificial fence as flat as possible. If this surface is bowed, has any gaps in it against that sacrificial fence, I'll put my double-sided tape on here, and when I clamp it to the fence, I'll have a gap or a weak spot somewhere in this flat surface. And that weak spot will give a tendency for the board to not adhere very well, and it may pull away from the sacrificial fence as you're cutting your thin strips. So to get this surface as flat as possible, I'm going to clean it up on my edge sander. I'm ready to cut my board on the AccuSlice system and I've taken my board and I've applied some double-sided tape to this board and the tape I'm using is the X-Fasten tape which I've described on uh, previous videos and also there's an application note on a website in which we, re we reviewed about a dozen different tapes to find the best tape for use with the AccuSlice and this tape has three unique properties number one is very thin uh, don't use some of the carpet tapes. The carpet tapes are much thicker, and being thicker, you'll have more vibration, you won't get as smooth of a cut. So the thinner the tape, the better the tape. The second property is the tape is cloth-based. So when you take it off, it comes apart uh, quite easily and doesn't rip and tear on you. And the third property it adheres very well, which is very important for this application. And that's why we, we settle on this tape. I use it for all my projects with the AccuSlice system. Next, make sure your sacrificial fence is clean, there's no dust on it. So just wipe it with the rag, get it nice and clean. And the next thing is, when you're doing the board, you want the board to be as close to the total length of the sacrificial fence as possible. If it hangs over the end, you may get, you'll get more vibration on that end, and you won't get as good of a cut. In particular, the board should not go past the front edge of the sacrificial fence. Your starting cut is very important, so it must be fully supported by the sacrificial fence. In this case, I have a 24-inch carriage, and I have a 30-inch sacrificial fence on this. And my board is between 30 and 32 inches long, uh, not exceeding more than 2 inches past the end of this uh, sacrificial fence. So I adhere uh, the board to the very front edge of the sacrificial fence. And I'm overhanging here about a half an inch, which should be fine. And then I use some clamps to clamp the board. And the purpose of the clamps is just to uh, get a good first adhesion of the tape uh, to the board. So if you just tape this for you know a minute or two at the most, that's all that's needed. And then I can put a couple other clamps in the center just to set the tape, because this is a pretty long board. I'm 
Now my board was cut nice and straight, it's perfectly flat. Uh, if you do have a board that has you know a slight gap in it, and uh, rather than just take it off and start over, the one thing you can do is use hot melt glue on the boards. And I've used this on occasion, and particularly on the end here, where it's not getting air through the cut, I sometimes put a bead of the hot melt glue. That just helps eliminate the possibility the board might come off. If you have a gap in here, you can run a gap down the center here, down this uh, right, right along the crack here. The disadvantage of doing that is uh, I try to get every spare thousands of an inch out of my boards, and if you start cutting into the glue, it gums up your blade. So that's not the best idea, but I have done it on occasion. Just it does gum up your blade. So this has been, you know, clamped for a few seconds. That should be enough. And we're ready to start cutting. Okay, as I've done in the past, uh, the first thing is zero out my indexer wheel. Move the board up against the bandsaw blade, lock my course adjustment knobs in place, slide it back, make sure it's against the, the blade, and then I'm going to advance it one full turn, which is the curve of the blade, and then one additional full turn. Again, this first cut is just to give me a first flat surface on my board, so all my subsequent cuts will be perfectly uh, parallel to one another. Okay, I've already sliced a bunch of boards with the system. These boards vary in thickness from 50 thousandths of an inch and I'll go up to uh, probably an eighth of an inch thickness. And I usually do like uh, 50 thousandths, 75 thousandths, 100, and then 125 thousandths uh, in, in steps going up. And these boards will be nice and straight, perfectly flat. So after I made my first cut, I'm ready to start cutting my boards. And on this board, I'm going to be doing uh, 100 thousandths inch thick boards. So again, it's just loosen my mag jigs. One turn for the curve for the blade, and then two full turns, each turn being 50 thousandths of an inch. Lock it in place, and keep repeating that until the whole entire board is cut off. I've just cut 11 boards in that one and three quarter inch thick piece of cherry. And now a little bit of cleanup might be required. Uh, you might have to get a little bit of sandpaper. There's a fuzzy on the edges here to clean it up. These are clean, they don't need that. And you always get a burr on the end of the, of the board where it cuts out from the end of the band saw. That needs to be cleaned up just with a chisel. That's simple, just getting rid of that burr. Uh, and that cleans it up. These boards now are perfectly flat, perfectly smooth. No additional standing is needed for, for glue up. They can just be glued up right as they are. I spent two days cutting all these strips, uh, one and three quarter wide by you know various thicknesses, all the way from twenty thousandths up to an eighth of an inch thick. All my different woods from maple and walnut and paduk and yellow heart and purple heart and uh, just about twelve different varieties of wood I cut up. And then I arranged them into patterns so I have some contrasting patterns, and I have uh, 11 boards here, about between three and a half and four inches wide uh, to glue up. So this will take me a couple days to get these all glued up uh, to prepare my blanks for 
on my uh, dizzy bowls and dizzy eggs that I'll be making in the near, in the near future. This is a new glue up jig I just made to glue up my laminated strips for making some of my dizzy bowl patterns as well as some of my feature strips that I use on many of my projects. Uh, you may have seen some of my previous videos. I had, I had an old jig which I used, which worked fairly well but it had a few problems. It mainly consisted of just a, an angle iron mounted on a piece of MDF and in this front uh, rail just ran free and then when I clamped the pieces in between them after they were glued up, uh, it worked pretty well, but what happened was this front piece kept riding up. And as it, ride, it, it began to ride up, my piece began to do this. They, they began to twist. So I didn't get the very best uh, joints. So I made a new jig now. This jig is made out of some channel. I have uh, five pieces of channel here. They're one foot long. Uh, and my back rails, actually I have two rails on the system. These rails are one and three quarter inch by one and three quarter inch by quarter inch thick aluminum uh, angle uh, aluminum angle brackets and they ride in the rails so it doesn't move up and down. The back rail is mounted to the um, slide that actually has uh, some screws in there with nuts that clamp in there so that's held fast so that one doesn't move. This front uh, rail rides on some uh, spacers, on some screws here, and this rides freely back and forth. And then when I put my boards in there and clamp them tight, this does not ride up and down. That was the problem with my previous one, so that problem has gone away. So this should, should work much better in uh, gluing up my boards. <coughs> These uh, guides I actually made. Uh, my first temp I tried just using some uh, hex head screws which work pretty well but they tend to bind up and so I made these two inch long uh, brass uh, spacers with screws in them and they slide in the rail and they look very much smoother and they don't bind up like the, uh, the nuts did previously. So I can tighten these screws as tight or as loose as I want them and this just rides freely. So after I put my boards in there you know, after they're glued up, I put them in here and I clamp them up and this will not ride up, it'll keep nice and straight. Then I use either seat clamps or spring clamps to clamp it, uh, to set the glue. I spent the last couple days making a bunch of these uh, strips. These are all a uh, variety of different woods going from uh, uh, 60, uh, 20 thousandths inch thick up to an eighth of an inch thick and they're all one and three quarter inch wide. And these will become, uh, laminated strips will become dizzy bowls or uh, dizzy bowl patterns for eggs or bells I'll be making in the near future. I could also use these for laminated strips for feature rings in uh, some of the bowls I make. Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of epoxy lately, so I'm going to be trying gluing this up with epoxy. The advantage of the epoxy is it has a longer setup time. So I'll be able to do a bunch of these, but I'm not even trying to do the whole strip here, which is like 55 strips, gluing them all at once. Be a much faster way of gluing them up. If I'm using tight bond 2 glue, uh, the glue sets up pretty fast, so I'm only, only be able to do maybe 10 or 12 strips at a time, and then I gotta glue those together, so it'll take quite a bit longer to set them up and glue them up. So let's start out with the epoxy. We'll try gluing it up and uh, see how it works. I ran my jig from getting all messed up with glue. I usually put a piece of wax paper on my jig to protect it. And I actually pull a little bit of lip on the back here to go over the angle iron. And then when I put my strips in there, I can run my front strip up against it, clamp it, and I'll keep the jigs nice and clean. So we'll start the glue up process. This is a set of 55 strips. It is symmetric, so the opposite sides are the same. Uh, 
So we'll start gluing this up uh, using epoxy. I'm going to be using the West uh, epoxy system for this video. In the past they used Aeromarine, which is a one-to-one -one mix, which makes it easy to mix. But I bought this West system, which is a one-to-five mix. Uh, it has the advantage that it's clear, where the, uh, the Aeromarine has a slight amber color, gives you a little of color. So this will be clear, you won't be able to see it at all. Uh, and it's mixed five-to-one, and you have these automatic dispensers to automatically uh, give you the correct amount, so there's no uh, weighing or measuring uh, to set up your epoxy glue. Also, I have another jig here, which is another piece of plywood. I put another piece of a uh, one th three quarter inch uh, material here to raise it up a little bit so when I put the roller on, I don't get glue all over the, the bottom here. So I'll start with the first one and give it a try. Took almost an hour to glue up, and epoxy is messy. So the next thing is to get it into my uh, jig. Okay, this dried overnight. So now I'll go run through this my joiner planer to uh, score up the top and bottom surfaces and maybe on the ed edge sander to clean up the uh, two sides.
Now the epoxy worked pretty good, a little messy. I was able to go up over 50 strips in one setting on this, which made it much nicer. And there's my finished laminated board, about four inches wide, one and three quarter inch thick, and about 30 inches long. So this is all ready to make one of my dizzy bowl patterns.